Welcome to Wild Hearts. In this video, we are going through some important features you need to know and tips and tricks for them. And starting this one off, we have character customization. That is a feature in this game. And it goes in depth quite a bit to the point where you can change your undergarments, your voice, your personality. And then we have when you are killing Kimono, which are the creatures in the game, when you have killed them, especially the small ones, what you want to do is go over to them, and if you're using a controller, press your left trigger and finish them off, because that is going to grant you the materials that you can get. They're not an automatic thing when you kill Kimono, so don't forget to go around finishing the animals that you kill, or the Kimono that you kill. Then we have Conjuring, and when you start the game, you're going to get a tutorial for this, but it's very, very important to learn how to conjure things properly, because there are going to be walls that are really high that you need to climb, and you're going to have to conjure a couple of boxes so you can jump on top of them. But when you're on top, it's not just about doing a normal jump and or even just holding down your right bumper and starting to climb the wall because you can fail these climbs. Although it won't really deal damage or anything like that, it's just important to learn it because you can jump off the top of the boxes that you're conjuring. And that's going to help you because you have a stamina bar. And once that stamina bar runs out whilst you're climbing, you're going to fall off that wall. And when you're looking for the materials to conjure things, make sure that you hold down your left trigger so that you can use Hunter Vision, as that is going to allow you to see what things like basically rocks you can hit or trees you can chop down in order to get the threads so that you can continue conjuring items. Then we have fighting your very first giant kimono. These are absolute beasts, and they are going to deal a lot of damage to you, especially at the start of the game. Once you get the hang of it, you start mastering your ability to dodge and the uh, attack moves and stuff. It's going to help you out. But fighting your very first giant kimono can actually be quite stressful. Then as you make progress in the game, you are going to be able to craft things in different bases that are like basically located around the map. What you need to do is find the dragon pits or a dragon pit in an area. So when you're in the tree camp, find the dragon pit and you're going to use materials that you find around the world in order to basically increase the level of the dragon pit which is going to let you put more things in the base. You're going to start off with simple things like a campfire and a tent. The tents are going to allow you to fast travel, the campfires are going to let you initiate quests, and also join other players in online gameplay. Then we have eating, which is a feature in the game. When you are exploring the open world, you're picking up different materials, you have the ability to eat some things that you find. These are going to give you health boosts, they're going to boost your defense and stuff as well. So it's probably a good idea when you jump into a hunt with a giant kimono that you actually eat something before the fight. Then as you make a little bit more progress in the game, you are going to unlock a blacksmith. You can put down a forge and they are going to let you forge weapons. And the trees for the weapons are massive. As well as getting upgrades to the damage and stuff you deal, you can also get skills. So for an example, you get savage and there is one based on critical. Savage is going to increase the damage you are dealing. And if you press Y on your controller, you are going to pop up the skills so you can see exactly what each one does. And another important feature regarding forging weapons is when you go from one upgrade to another, you can actually inherit skills and you can put them from like your previous upgrade to your next one, like what's going to be your current upgrade. And I think that's really good because Savage comes on the very first upgrade I did and I was able to bring that over to the second one, which keeps the damage increasing as you're making progress through the game. Then as well as forging weapons, you can also forge armor. If you buy the big edition of the game, you're going to get two full armor sets. But when you go into the armor menu, you'll be able to craft new armor using materials you get from kimono and things like that. And the armor as well as the weapons are going to have skills with them to stop you being poisoned as quick and other things that are going to help you out with your progress through the game. Then, as mentioned in a previous tip, you can go to your campfire, which are located as long as you've conjured one. They are located in your camps and stuff, and these are going to be where you take on quests. So when you are speaking to an NPC, they say, can you go on this hunt? And you unlock the hunts and everything, as well as being able to access online play, you can take on quests from the campfire. And scattered around the game world, you are going to find hunting gates. These are put there so that when you interact with them, you can assist other players on their journey. I think that's really, really good because not only can you find people to help you, like to assist you in combat, you can also go and help other players. 
Then as you are exploring the world, you're going to find these little balls. They are called Sukumo, if I've pronounced that properly. And they are Hunter's Aids. They've got a number of different forms. You can enhance them at campfires. They can just help you do different things. Next up, we have one of the most important tips I could give any player. And that is to make sure as you're exploring, you're roaming around looking for a hunt or something like that. Make sure you are gathering all the different materials you find. It's not just plants and stuff you are going to find. There are going to be little animals like squirrels and birds. And the birds, as an example, can fly away so you can miss out on that material. So make sure that when you are gathering materials, just be very, very quick to press your left trigger and collect the materials. Otherwise, you can miss them. You'll find plenty as you're playing the game, but it's important to make sure you're gathering them because you do never know when you are going to need certain materials. Then when it comes to fighting, especially giant kimono, make sure that you click in your right stick and you are always locking onto them. It can be frustrating if you're not locked on, trying to move the camera and angle it properly so that you can see the giant kimono, and locking on is just going to be really helpful. But not only that, when you are in combat as well, you are going to get this blue bar at the bottom left that fills up the more you attack the giant kimono. When that is full, if you hold down your right trigger and press X or Y, it's going to initiate these like special moves and they deal so much damage. It's a much bigger combo than using basic attacks. It's going to help you with these hunts like massively. But another tip is to make sure that you learn the attack moves of your enemies, know when they're going to attack. The very first giant kimono you find is called a rage tail and they have multiple attacks. They even charge at you, like stamping their feet around. It's a crazy, crazy fight against the Rage Tail. And this is still really early in the game. But learn the attack moves, master your attack and your defense, and you're going to have a much better time in the game. But then moving on to the next tip, be careful because if these giant kimono hit you and there's a little like cliff edge or something like that, they can knock you off it. I got yeeted off a cliff and I had to run around, conjure some blocks, jump back up onto the wall, climb back up into the arena or into the area the giant kimono is, then carry on fighting. Be careful that they don't hit you off cliffs and stuff. Then regarding materials, one of the most important ones is healing water. These are really, really common. You'll find them everywhere, but they are going to be so important. When you are fighting and you've had to heal a few times, just look around and you'll probably find some healing water. You're going to need it. My first couple of hunts, I was using a lot of healing water. So I had to just keep running around finding more so that I didn't run out. Because these giant kimono are hitting for like a third of your health at a time. Some of their attacks can deal crazy, crazy damage. And there is a small animation. takes a second or two to actually use the healing water. But just press up on your D-pad and it's going to heal you. Then regarding the camping tents, the campfires and everything like that, there are going to be multiple areas where you can essentially build a base. So wherever you find a dragon pit, like I did in the tavern ruins, that was on my way to the first hunt I did outside of like the introduction, the tutorial. I found it, interacted with the dragon pit, used some materials, and the very first thing I put down was a camping tent. Because when you open up your map, if there is a camping tent in that area, it lets you fast travel to and from. So just make sure you're saving your materials. And I would say when it comes to conjuring things within a base, focus on the camping tent first. Then last but definitely not least, if you go into like your map screen, so you press back on an Xbox controller, if you use your triggers and go along to the very end on the right hand side, there is a tab called the Cyclopedia. And this is going to give you information about small kimono, giant kimono. And there's a little description about them. You can see where they spawn, how many you've slayed. But there is a feature about the rage tail at least. When I have slayed five of them, it's going to give me more information. And that is important features you need to know about Wild Hearts. Especially at the start of the game. It's kind of like a beginner guide. But I thought after my initial bit of playtime, I would give you some tips and tricks to help you out in your adventures. And we are going to leave that video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about Wild Hearts in the comments. And check out this video if you want to see other content on the channel. I will see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.